Heracles, 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 glory slash pride of Hera, Hera, born Alcaeus, Alcos, or Alcides, Alcides, was a divine hero in Greek mythology, the son of Zeus and Alcmene, foster son of Amphitryon. He was a great grandson and half brother, as they are both sired by the god Zeus, of Perseus. He was the greatest of the Greek heroes, a paragon of masculinity, the ancestor of royal clans who claimed to be Heraclady and a champion of the Olympian order against thonic monsters. In Rome in the modern West, he is known as Hercules, with whom the later Roman emperors, in particular Commodus and Maximian, often identified themselves. The Romans adopted the Greek version of his life and works essentially unchanged, but added anecdotal detail of their own, some of it linking the hero with the geography of the central Mediterranean. Details of his cult were adapted to Rome as well. Many popular stories were told of his life, the most famous being the Twelve Labors of Heracles, Alexandrian poets of the Hellenistic Age drew his mythology into a high poetic and tragic atmosphere. His figure, which initially drew on Near Eastern motifs such as the lion fight, was widely known. Heracles was the greatest of Hellenic thonic heroes, but unlike other Greek heroes, no tomb was identified as his. Heracles was both hero and god, as Pindar says heroes Teos, at the same festival sacrifice was made to him first as a hero, with a thonic libation, and then as a god, upon an altar, thus he embodies the closest Greek approach to a demigod. The core of the story of Heracles has been identified by Walter Burkert as originating in Neolithic hunter culture and traditions of shamanistic crossings in Tothi netherworld. It is possible that the myths surrounding Heracles were based on the life of the real person or several people whose accomplishments became exaggerated with time. Based on commonalities in the legends of Heracles and Odysseus, author Stephen Sora suggested that they were both based on the same historical person, who made his mark prior to recorded history. Heracles' role as a culture hero, whose death could be a subject of mythic telling, see below, was accepted into the Olympian pantheon during classical times. This created an awkwardness in the encounter with Odysseus in the episode of Odyssey 11, called the Nekuya, where Odysseus encounters Heracles in Hades. Ancient critics were aware of the problem of the aside that interrupts the vivid and complete description, in which Heracles recognizes Odysseus and hails him, and modern critics find very good reasons for denying that the verses beginning, in Fagel's translation his ghost I mean, were part of the original composition, once people knew of Heracles' admission to Olympus, they would not tolerate his presence in the underworld, remarks Friedrich Solmsen noting that the interpolated verses represent a compromise between conflicting representations of Heracles. In Christian circles a humorous reading of the widespread Heracles cult was attributed to a historical figure who had been offered cult status after his death. Thus Eusebius, Preparation of the Gospel, 10.12, reported that Clement could offer historical dates for Hercules as a king in Argos, from the reign of Hercules in Argos to the deification of Hercules himself and of Asclepius there are comprised 38 years, according to Apollodorus the Chronicler and from that point to the deification of Castor and Pollux 53 years, and somewhere about this time was the capture of Troy. Readers with a literalist bent, following Clement's reasoning, have asserted from this remark that, since Heracles ruled over Turns in Argos at the same time that Eurystheus ruled over Mycenae, and since at about this time Linus was Heracles' teacher, one can conclude, based on Jerome's date, in his universal history, his chronic and given to Linus notoriety in teaching Heracles in 1264 BCE, that Heracles' death and deification occurred 38 years later, in approximately 1226 BCE. The ancient Greeks celebrated the festival of the Heraclea, which commemorated the death of Heracles, on the second day of the month of Metagitanian which would fall in late July or early August. What is believed to be an Egyptian temple of Heracles in the Ba'ariya oasis dates to 21 BCE. A reassessment of Ptolemy's descriptions of the island of Malta attempted to link the site at Ras Iraheb with a temple to Heracles, but the arguments are no conclusive. Several ancient cities were named Heraclea in his honor. Although the Athenians were among the first to worship Heracles as a god, there were Greek cities that refused to recognize the hero's divine status. There are also several polis that merely provided two separate sanctuaries for Heracles, one recognizing him as a god the other only as a hero. This ambiguity helped create the Heracles cult especially when historians, for example Herodotus, and artists encouraged worship such as the painters during the time of the Pesistratos, who often presented Heracles entering Olympus in their works. 
Some sources explain that the cult of Heracles persisted because of the hero's ascent to heaven and his suffering, which became the basis for festivals, ritual, rites, and the organization of mysteries. There is the observation, for example, that sufferings, the thea, gave rise to the rituals of grief and mourning, which came before the joy in the mysteries in the sequence of cult rituals. Also, like the case of Apollo, the cult of Hercules has been sustained through the years by absorbing local cult figures such as those who share the same nature. He was also constantly invoked as a patron for men, especially the young ones. For example, he was considered the ideal in warfare so he presided over gymnasiums and the Ephebes or those men undergoing military training. There were ancient towns and cities that also adopted Heracles as a patron deity, contributing to the spread of his cult. There was the case of the royal house of Macedonia, which claimed lineal descent from the hero primarily for purposes of divine protection and legitimate or off actions. The earliest evidence that show the worship of Heracles in popular cult was in 6th century BC, 121 to 122 and 160 to 165, via an ancient inscription from Phaleron. Extraordinary strength, courage, ingenuity, and sexual prowess with both males and females were among the characteristics commonly attributed to him. Heracles used his wits on several occasions when his strength did not suffice, such as when laboring for the king Aegeus of Elis, wrestling the giant Antaeus, or tricking Atlas into taking the sky back onto his shoulders. Together with Hermes, he was the patron and protector of Gymnasia and Palestri. His iconographic attributes are the lion skin and the club. These qualities did not prevent him from being regarded as a playful figure who used games to relax from his labors and played a great deal with children. By conquering dangerous archaic forces he is said to have made the world safe for mankind and Toby its benefactor. Heracles was an extremely passionate and emotional individual, capable of doing both great deeds for his friends, such as wrestling with Thanatos on behalf of Prince Admetus, who had regaled Heracles with his hospitality or restoring his friend and Darius to the throne of Sparta after he was overthrown, and being a terrible enemy who would wreak horrible vengeance on those who crossed him, as Aegeus, Neleus and Laomedon all found out to their cost. There was also a coldness to his character, which was demonstrated by Sophocles' depiction of the hero in the Trachinae. Heracles threatened his marriage with his desire to bring two women under the same roof, one of them was his wife Deonera. In the works of Euripides involving Heracles, an insight was presented regarding his character and this was through his madness. The idea was that his actions were partly driven by forces outside rational human control and that by highlighting the divine causation of his madness, it becomes a device that problematizes Heracles' character and status within the civilized context. This aspect is also highlighted in Hercules Florence where Seneca linked the hero's madness to an illusion and a consequence of Heracles' refusal to live a simple life offered by Amphitryon. It was indicated that he preferred the extravagant violence of the heroic life and that its ghosts eventually manifested in his madness and that the hallucinatory visions defined Heracles' character. A major factor in the well-known tragedies surrounding Heracles is the hatred that the goddess Hera, wife of Zeus, had for him. A full account of Heracles must render it clear why Heracles was so tormented by Hera, when there were many illegitimate offspring sired by Zeus. Heracles was the son of the affair Zeus had with the mortal woman Alcmene. Zeus made love to her after disguising himself as her husband, Amphitryon, home early from war. Amphitryon did return later the same night, and Alcmene became pregnant with his son at the same time, a case of heteropaternal superfecundation, where a woman carries twins sired by different fathers. Thus, Heracles' very existence proved at least one of Zeus' many illicit affairs, and Hera often conspired against Zeus' mortal offspring as revenge for her husband's infidelities. His twin mortal brother, son of Amphitryon, was Iphicles, father of Heracles' charioteer Iolaus. On the night the twins Heracles and Iphicles were to be born, Hera, knowing of her husband Zeus' adultery, persuaded Zeus to swear an oath that the child born that night to a member of the house of Perseus would become high king. Hera did this knowing that while Heracles was to be born a descendant of Perseus, so too was Eurystheus. Once the oath was sworn, Hera hurried to Alcmene's dwelling and slowed the birth of the twins Heracles and Iphicles by forcing Alithia, goddess of childbirth, to sit cross-legged with her clothing tied in knots, thereby causing the twins to be trapped in the womb. Meanwhile, Hera caused Eurystheus to be born prematurely, making him high king in place of Heracles. She would have permanently delayed Heracles' birth had she not been fooled by Galanthus, Alcmene's servant, who lied to Alithia, saying that Alcmene had already delivered the baby. Upon hearing this, 
she jumped in surprise, loosing the knots and inadvertently allowing Alcmene to give birth to Heracles and Iphicles. Fear of Hera's revenge led Alcmene to expose the infant Heracles, but he was taken up and brought to Hera by his half-sister Athena, who played an important role as protectress of heroes. Hera did not recognize Heracles and nursed him out of pity. Heracles suckled so strongly that he caused Hera pain, and she pushed him away. Her milk sprayed across the heavens and there formed the Milky Way. But with divine milk, Heracles had acquired supernatural powers. Athena brought the infant back to his mother, and he was subsequently raised by his parents. The child was originally given the name Alcides by his parents, it was only later that he became known as Heracles. He was renamed Heracles in an unsuccessful attempt to mollify Hera. He and his twin were just eight months old when Hera sent two giant snakes into the children's chamber. Iphicles cried from fear, but his brother grabbed a snake in each hand and strangled them. He was found by his nurse playing with them on his cot as if they were eight toys. Astonished, Amphitryon sent for the seer Tiresias, who prophesied an unusual future for the boy, saying he would vanquish numerous monsters. After killing his music tutor Linus with a lyre, he was sent to tend cattle on a mountain by his foster father Amphitryon. Here, according to an allegorical parable, the choice of Heracles, invented by the sophist Prodicus, circa 400 BCE, and reported in Xenophon's Memorabilia February 1, 2021 34, he was visited by two allegorical figures, vice and virtue, who offered him a choice between a pleasant and easy life or a severe but glorious life. He chose the latter. This was part of a pattern of ethicizing Heracles over the 5th century BCE. Later in Thebes, Heracles married King Creon's daughter, Megara. In a fit of madness, induced by Hera, Heracles killed his children by Megara. After his madness had been cured with Hellebore by Anticurius, the founder of Anticyra, he realized what he had done and fled to the Oracle of Delphi. Unbeknownst to him, the Oracle was guided by Hera. He was directed to serve King Eurystheus for ten years and perform any task Eurystheus required of him. Eurystheus decided to give Heracles ten labors. But after completing them, Heracles was cheated by Eurystheus when he added two more, resulting in the twelve labors of Heracles. Driven mad by Hera, Heracles slew his own children. To expiate the crime, Heracles was required to carry out ten labors set by his archenemy, Eurystheus, who had become king in Heracles' place. If he succeeded, he would be purified of his sin and, as myth says, he would become a god, and be granted immortality. Despite the difficulty, Heracles accomplished these tasks, but Eurystheus in the end did not accept the success the hero had with two of the labors. The cleansing of the Aegean stables, because Heracles was going to accept pay for the labor. Neither did he accept the killing of the Lernaean Hydra as Heracles' brother, Eolaus, had helped him burn the stumps of the multiplying heads. Eurystheus set two more tasks, fetching the golden apples of Hesperides and capturing Cerberus. In the end, with ease, the hero successfully performed each added task, bringing the total number of labors up to the magic number 12. Not all versions and writers give the labors in the same order. The Bibliotheca, 2.5.1 to February 5, 2012, gives the following order. After completing these tasks, Heracles joined the Argonauts in a search for the Golden Fleece. He also fell in love with Princess Eoli of Echalia. King Eurydice of Echalia promised his daughter, Eoli to whoever could beat his sons in an archery contest. Heracles won but Eurydice abandoned his promise. Heracles' advances were spurned by the king and his sons, except for one, Eolus' brother Iphidus. Heracles killed the king and his sons, excluding Iphidus, and abducted Eoli. Iphidus became Heracles' best friend. However, once again, Hera drove Heracles mad and he threw Iphidus over the city wall to his death. Once again, Heracles purified himself through three years of servitude, this time to Queen Omphali of Lydia. Omphali was a queen or princess of Lydia. As penalty for a murder, imposed by Xeniclea, the Delphic oracle, Heracles was to serve as her slave for a year. He was forced to do women's work and to wear women's clothes, while she wore the skin of the Nemean lion and carried his olive wood club. After some time, Omphali freed Heracles and married him. Some sources mention a son born to them who was variously named. It was at that time that the Cercopes, mischievous wood spirits, stole Heracles' weapons. He punished them by tying them to a stick with their faces pointing downward. While walking through the wilderness, Heracles was set upon by the Dryopes. In Apollonius of Rhodes Argonautica it is recalled that Heracles had mercilessly slain their king, Theodamus, over one of the latter's bulls, 
and made war upon the Dryopes because they gave no heed to justice in their lives. After the death of their king, the Dryopes gave in and offered him Prince Hylas. He took the youth on as his weapons bearer and beloved. Years later, Heracles and Hylas joined the crew of the Argo. As Argonauts, they only participated in part of the journey. In Mysia, Hylas was kidnapped by the nymphs of a local spring. Heracles, heartbroken, searched for a long time but Hylas had fallen in love with the nymphs and never showed up again. In other versions, he simply drowned. Either way, the Argo set sail without them. Hesiod's Theogony and Aeschylus' Prometheus Unbound both tell that Heracles shot and killed the eagle that tortured Prometheus, which was his punishment be Zeus for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to mortals. Heracles freed the titan from his chains and his torments. Prometheus then made predictions regarding further deeds of Heracles. On his way back to Mycenae from Iberia, having obtained the cattle of Gerion as his tenth labor, Heracles came to Liguria in northwestern Italy where he engaged in battle with two giants, Albion and Bergio nor Dersinus, sons of Poseidon. The opponents were strong, Hercules was in a difficult position so he prayed to his father Zeus for help. Under the aegis of Zeus, Heracles won the battle. It was this kneeling position of Heracles when he prayed to his father Zeus that gave the name Angonasson, Epsilon Gamma Gamma Nu Alpha Sigma Iota Nu, derived from Epsilon Nu Gamma Nu Alpha Sigma Iota Nu meaning on his knees or the kneeler, to the constellation known as Heracles' constellation. The story, among others, is described by Dionysius of Halicarnassus. Before Homer's Trojan War, Heracles had made an expedition to Troy and sacked it. Previously, Poseidon had sent a sea monster to attack Troy. The story is related in several digressions in the Iliad, 7.451-453, 20.145-146. Twenty one point four four two to four hundred fifty seven, and is found in Pseudo Apollodorus Bibliothique, two point five point nine. This expedition became the theme of the eastern pediment of the Temple of Aphia. Laomedon planned on sacrificing his daughter Hesione to Poseidon in the hope of appeasing him. Heracles happened to arrive, along with Telamon and Oikos, and agreed to kill the monster if Laomedon would give him the horse received from Zeus as compensation for Zeus kidnapping Ganymede. Laomedon agreed. Heracles killed the monster, but Laomedon went back on his word. Accordingly, in a later expedition, Heracles and his followers attacked Troy and sacked it. Then they slew all Laomedon's sons present there save Podarchus, who was renamed Priam, who saved his own life by giving Heracles a golden veil Hesione had made. Telamon took Hesione as a war prize and they had a son, Teucer. This is described in Sophocles' as Trachinia and in Ovid's Metamorphoses Book 9. Having wrestled and defeated Achelous, god of the Achelous River, Heracles takes Deianira as his wife. Traveling to Turins, a centaur, Nessus, offers to help Deianira across a fast-flowing river while Heracles swims it. However, Nessus is true to the archetype of the mischievous centaur and tries to steal Deianira away while Heracles is still in the water. Angry, Heracles shoots him with his arrows dipped in the poisonous blood of the Lernaean Hydra. Thinking of revenge, Nessus gives Deianira his blood-soaked tunic before he dies, telling her it will excite the love of her husband. Several years later, rumor tells Deianira that she has a rival for the love of Heracles. Deianira, remembering Nessus' words, gives Heracles the blood-stained shirt. Lycus, the herald, delivers the shirt to Heracles. However, it is still covered in the Hydra's blood from Heracles' arrows, and this poisons him, tearing his skin and exposing his bones. Before he dies, Heracles throws Lycus into the sea, thinking he was the one who poisoned him. According to several versions, Lycus turns to stone, becoming a rock standing in the sea, named for him. Heracles then uproots several trees and builds a funeral pyre on Mount Eta, which Pius, father of Philoctetes, lights. As his body burns, only his immortal side is left. Through Zeus' apotheosis, Heracles rises to Olympus as Hades. No one but Heracles' friend Philoctetes. Pius in some versions, would light his funeral pyre, in an alternate version, it is Eolaus who lights the pyre. For this action, Philoctetes or Pius received Heracles' bow and arrows, which were later needed by the Greeks to defeat Troy in the Trojan War. Philoctetes confronted Paris and shot a poison arrow at him. The Hydra poison subsequently led to the death of Paris. The Trojan War, however, continued until the Trojan horse was used to defeat Troy. According to Herodotus, Heracles lived 900 years before Herodotus' own time, circa 1300 BCE. During the course of his life, Heracles married four times, 
An episode of his female affairs that stands out was his stay at the palace of Thespius, king of Thespiae, who wished him to kill the lion of Cathiron. As a reward, the king offered him the chance to perform sexual intercourse with all fifty of his daughters in one night. Heracles complied and they all became pregnant and all bore sons. This is sometimes referred to as his thirteenth labor. Many of the kings of ancient Greece traced their lines to one or another of these, notably the kings of Sparta and Macedon. Yet another episode of his female affairs that stands out was when he carried away the oxen of Gerion. He also visited the country of the Scythians. Once there, while asleep, his horses suddenly disappeared. When he woke and wandered about in search of them, he came into the country of Hylia. He then found the Dracaena of Scythia, sometimes identified as Echidna, in a cave. When he asked whether she knew anything about his horses, she answered that they were in her own possession, but that she would not give them up unless he would consent to stay with her for a time. Heracles accepted the request, and became by her the father of Agathirsus, Gelinus, and Scythes. The last of them became king of the Scythians, according to his father's arrangement, because he was the only one among the three brothers that was able to manage the bow which Heracles had left behind and to use his father's girdle. In some versions, the Scythian Echidna's children by him are known as the Dracontidae and were the ancestors of a house of Cadmus. As a symbol of masculinity and warriorship, Heracles also had a number of male lovers. Plutarch, in his Eroticos, maintains that Heracles' male lovers were beyond counting. Of these, the one most closely linked to Heracles is the Theban Eolaus. According to a myth thought to be of ancient origins, Eolaus was Heracles' charioteer and squire. Heracles in the end helped Eolaus find a wife. Plutarch reports that down to his own time, male couples would go to Eolaus's tomb in Thebes to swear an oath of loyalty to the hero and to each other. One of Heracles' male lovers, and one represented in ancient as well as modern art, is Hylas. Though it is of more recent vintage, dated to the 3rd century, than Tat with the Olaus, it had themes of mentoring in the ways of a warrior and help finding a wife in the end. There is nothing in Apollonius's account that suggests that Hylas was a sexual lover as opposed to a companion and servant. Another reputed male lover of Heracles is Elacitus, who was honored in Sparta with a sanctuary and yearly games. Elacitia. The myth of their love is an ancient one. Abderus' eponymous hero, Abderus, was another of Heracles' lovers. He was said to have been entrusted with, and slain by, the carnivorous mares of Thracian Diomedes. Heracles founded the city of Abdera in Thrace in his memory, where he was honored with athletic games. Another myth is that of Iphitus. Another story is the one of his love for Nibrius, who was the most beautiful man who came to Nithilian, Iliad, 673. But Ptolemy adds that certain authors made Nireus out to be a son of Heracles. Pausanias makes mention of Sostratus, a youth of Dime, Achaea, as a lover of Heracles. Sostratus was said to have died young and to have been buried by Heracles outside the city. The tomb was still there in historical times, and the inhabitants of Dime honored Sostratus as a hero. The youth seems to have also been referred to as Polystratus. There is also a series of lovers who are either later inventions or purely literary conceits. Among these are Admetus, who assisted in the hunt for the Caledonian boar, Adonis, Carethus, and Nestor, who was said to have been loved for his wisdom. His role as lover was perhaps to explain why he was the only son of Neil to be spared by the hero. A scholiast on Argonautica lists the following male lovers of Heracles, Hylas, Philoctetes, Diamas, Perithos, and Phryx, after whom a city in Libya was named. Diamas is also mentioned by Stephanus of Byzantium as the eponym of the Deme Diomia of the Attic Phylogies. Heracles is said to have fallen in love with Diamas when he was received as guest by Diamas' father Colitus. Perithos and Phryx are otherwise unknown, and so is the version that suggests a sexual relationship between Heracles and Philoctetes. All of Heracles' marriages and almost all of his heterosexual affairs resulted in births of a number of sons and at least four daughters. One of the most prominent is Hylas, the son of Heracles and Deianera or Milete. The term Heraclete, although it could refer to all of Heracles' children and further descendants, is most commonly used to indicate the descendants of Hylas, in the context of their lasting struggle for return to Peloponnesus, out of where Hylas and his brothers, the children of Heracles by Deianera were thought to have been expelled by Eurystheus. The children of Heracles by Megara are collectively well known because of their ill fate, but there is some disagreement among sources as to their number and individual names. Apollodorus lists three, Therimachus, Creontiades and Dicoon, to these Hyginus adds Ophitus and, probably by mistake, 
Archelaus, who is otherwise known to have belonged to the Heraclidae, but to have lived several generations later. A scholiast on Pindaresodes provides a list of seven completely different names Aniclidus, Chersibius, Mesistophonus, Menebrontes, Patrocles, Polydorus, Toxoclitus. Other well known children of Heracles include Telephus, king of Mysia, by Alga, and Lepolemus, one of the Greek commanders in the Trojan War, by Astyache. According to Herodotus, a line of 22 kings of Lydia descended from Hercules and Omphali. The line was called Tylonids after his Lydian name. The divine sons of Heracles and Hebe are Alexiaries and Aniclitus. In Rome, Heracles was honored as Hercules, and had a number of distinctively Roman myths and practices associated with him under that name. Herodotus connected Heracles to the Egyptian god Shu. Also he was associated with Khonsu. Another Egyptian god who was in some ways similar to Shu. As Khonsu, Heracles was worshipped at the now sunken city of Heraclion, where a large temple was constructed. Most often the Egyptians identified Heracles with Reshaf, transcribed in Greek as Asphes or Asaphes, Rho Sigma Alpha Phi Sigma. He was an ancient ram god whose cult was centered in Heracleopolis Magna. Via the Greco Buddhist culture, Heraclean symbolism was transmitted to the Far East. An example remains to this day in the Nyagardian deities in front of Japanese Buddhist temples. Herodotus also connected Heracles to Phoenician god Melkart. Salus mentions in his work on the Ugurthine War that the Africans believe Heracles to have died in Spain where, his multicultural army being left without a leader, the Medes, Persians, and Armenians who were once under his command split off and populated the Mediterranean coast of Africa. Temples dedicated to Heracles abounded all along the Mediterranean coastal countries. For example, the Temple of Heracles Mono Ecos, i.e. the Lone Dweller, built far from any nearby town upon a promontory in what is now the Côte d'Azur, gave its name to the area's more recent name, Monaco. The gateway to the Mediterranean Sea from the Atlantic Ocean, where the southernmost tip of Spain and the northernmost of Morocco face each other is, classically speaking, referred to as the Pillars of Hercules slash Heracles, owing to the story that he set up two massive spires of stone to stabilize the area and ensure the safety of ships sailing between the two land masses. In various languages, variants of Hercules' name are used as a male given name, such as Hercule in French, Hercules in Spanish, Heracles, in modern Greek and Heracle, in Georgian. There are many teams around the world that have this name or have Heracles as their symbol. The most popular in Greece is G.S. Heraclis Thessaloniki. Heracleum is a genus of flowering plants in the carrot family Apiaceae. Some of the species in this genus are quite large. In particular, the giant hogweed, Heracleum mandigasianum, is exceptionally large, growing up to 5 meters tall. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.